Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Ruben Marin. Um, I'm going to be the moderator for this one-on-one -on -one interview. Um, I'm here with my colleague, Samuel Gomez. Um, and just to give you guys a brief overview before we get started, um, I'm working on a marketing research project with a few other of my colleagues. And our goal is to compile research and gather data uh, throughout these first steps uh, when we're discovering the market. Um, and that market will be fast fashion. Um, so I'll, I'll give out my, um, my colleague an opportunity to briefly give a little bit of a spiel about himself and then we'll just get right into it. So my name is Sam Gomez, like he said. Um, I'm a senior at Marquette and studying sociology and political science. Great. Um, so um, as I mentioned, we'll just get right into it. Um, I'm going to start with a few um, open-ended questions. Um, and give you the opportunity to, um, you know, give your thoughts on how you feel about fast fashion and then we'll, you know, transition into those closed-ended questions. Mm -hmm. um, and so my group and I can gather um, further insights uh, to help us um, execute on our project and new promotion strategies that we hope to um, push out as we get further along through our project. Um, so to start off, um, how, familiar, how familiar are you with fast fashion and or that market? Um... Well, I guess the first thing to start with is that I'm kind of the antithesis of a fast fashion shopper. I do a lot of my shopping at like Goodwill, Value Village, a lot of thrift shop shopping. I mean, it's not out of like it's not because I'm like an environmentalist. It's more of just I enjoy uh, different fashion items, but I don't enjoy the high price tag when it comes to like high fashion in general. Okay, so convenience and that affordability factor is something, is definitely something that you consider when you're doing shopping. Yeah. All right, awesome, good to know. Um, how long have you been into um, thrift shopping or into this um, kind of getting into this hobby of fast fashion or thrifting? Um, I guess I've been into fashion like, what? Well, See, when I was younger, I was definitely more into fast fashion when I had more um, money to spend. As a younger kid, I would buy more brand name, um, appealing confidence. I would go to like actual like department stores and buy like new clothing. Um, but like ever since like high school, I started to go to um, Goodwill just at like the age of 16, started doing more like thrift shopping solely just to like save money on and still look the way I want to look. Awesome. So what is your impression of fast fashion or how do you think others perceive um, fast fashion or thrifting? Um, so I feel like fast fashion is almost like the opposite of thrifting in that it's very nice, fancy, well, not necessarily nice as in like high quality, but like nice as in like expensive clothing that that is m supposed to move off the shelves fairly quickly. Like, um, and aren't supposed to, and kind of like thrifting, um, it's similar in that I view it in that these are clothing items that you're not going to wear on a regular basis. They're like they're clothing for specific outfits, if that makes sense. Like, that's how I view it, is that you buy this for very special occasions where you wear it, and then pretty much add anything outside of those, you wouldn't necessarily wear it, if that makes sense. Okay, yeah, so just um, outfits, quick clothes that you can kind of mix match with outfits really quick, kind of, you know, you mm -hmm. get your use out of it very quickly. And like, very they're quickly. seasonal, like, they're, they tend to be very seasonal. So like, something that's like, would be relevant fashion-wise, like 2019, but won't be relevant next year or something like that. Okay, so a good kind of factor of fast fashion that people kind of picked up on or you feel is important is kind of, it's very trendy. Yeah. And it cycles out through um, retailers and through people's wardrobes, it seems like, pretty quickly. Yeah. All right, awesome. Um, overall, how satisfied are you um, with fast fashion in the sense that, I mean, how accessible is it to you as a college student? Um, that's the thing, I, I think it's not accessible at all to me currently, just okay. because 
fast fashion because it's so trendy. It tends to be so expensive to like keep up with the latest trends and to buy the latest clothing. You have to have so much, or not so much, but at least a certain amount of income that you can freely spend. For sure. And it is kind of, I mean, inconvenient where we don't really have the time to, to keep up with the latest trends um, unless and you are really um, an adopter of like fashion or you're highly in interested in fashion. And since I live at Marquette and don't currently have a car, I feel like my mobility is also lacking and that also is a thing with fast fashion because a lot of times with fast fashion you have to, I mean, a lot of times you can get it from certain websites but they're only up there for a limited time. So a lot of times you do have to go to like physical stores and department stores. So I feel like in that aspect, it's very, there's like a high bar barrier to entry to get into high fashion. Great. Um, so as a follow up to that, um, and you kind of already kind of answered, you know, why you feel a certain type of way towards fast fashion, but on a, on a numeric or satisfaction scale from one to seven, um, one being not satisfied at all and seven being the most satisfied, um, how do you feel about fast fashion in general? Mm -hmm. Kind of like a four, um, mostly because I do like all the fast fashion trends and looks, but you know, there's also another part of my brain that knows the terrible environmental impacts of just and then also the like sociological and then the social impacts of fast fashion and that you have these sweatshops all around the kids making having these kids make these sh shirts for like cents on the hour terrible working conditions yes, very um, long hours definitely and then to have it only be a product that realistically is only going to be worn like a couple months so, I mean, I guess I would only give it a four because, I know, because of the ethical concerns of it, if that makes sense. Definitely, and its effect on society. Yeah. That, that's your reasoning behind your answer. All right, great. Um, so moving on, um, I know you mentioned that you, because of, um, I guess, our location and accessibility being on a, on a market campus where there's, you know, not really much method of transportation, I mean, unless you want to ride the bus and, you know, mm -hmm. keeping in mind the, the time factors and things like that. Um, unless you have a method of transportation, um, it's not very convenient. Um, in, like you said, you do shop at uh, Goodwill, Valley Village are the ones you're familiar with. What other brands um, or fast fashion brands that you'd consider? Um, what do you, which of those brands do you like the least? See, that's the thing, like, what is fast? Like, I would even consider a lot of, like, what Louis Vuitton makes, like, fast fashion, like, in a lot of ways. Okay. Yeah, I, I mean, I would definitely consider um, those kind of, like, designer brands a different category in, the, in their retail space or fashion space. Um, but some of the more, like, trendy um, brands that are prominent today are Fashion Nova, um, Forever 21, um, H&M, Gap, American Eagle, um, and Zara, which is, you know, kind of, you know, gaining a lot of um, impressions and prominence, I guess, in that market. Um, how, so which of those do you like the least and which of these do you like the most or are you familiar with? Um, I guess the only one I wouldn't be familiar with is uh, Zara. Zara, okay. Then, um, but like I said, I, f I think I would have a more broad definition of what fast fashion is because like even those higher quality um, clothing items like that are traditionally not seen as fast fashion are still developed in a lot of the same ways and still are subjected to a lot of the same like market trends if that makes sense so certainly and I think another um something that's prominent um distinguishing fast fashion from like other luxury brands or just other clothing brands um is the fact that the clothing is kind of a lot cheaper though somehow the, the way it's manufactured or produced it kind of looks um high end almost if that makes sense i know kind of fashion nova um american eagle and even gap and zara too um mm -hmm. in, in other um countries has kind of that or even something like this like that's like a j crew sweater i would consider that like you know like this was made even though i 
got this at a thrift store. I would consider this an uh, item of fast fashion because it was made by one of those big conglomerates that were supposed to most most look more high quality, but it's not necessarily high, high quality. quality. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Well, moving on again, um, and going in now that we're kind of on that topic of the kind of clothes that you're into, um, what what specific features um, of, of like fast fashion clothing are you attracted to in general? What kind of items stick out to you that that will actually change your behavior and move you to you know making a purchase? Um. So that's a hard question. I guess the, um, I guess it really is all up to like the design and how, um, like as much as I would like to say if they change their business practices and yada yada yada, like that one, if I saw that on the shelf, I wouldn't know necessarily the business practices that led it to getting onto the shelf. But if I see a design or something that like fits your style and. Yeah, it's like something that's like very of my style and does have that more like and I'm also like higher quality fabric too because as someone who it does go frequently thrift shopping and is highly concerned with I'm not highly concerned but knows my way around fashion I can tell when like something is lower quality fabric compared to higher quality fabric Definitely. And that can kind of help you distinguish whether this product is worth it or not. Yeah. Definitely. And then size as well. If it's not my size, you know, because I'm like a really skinny dude. So So on the other hand, what features in in fast fashion clothing don't resonate with you or disappoint you? I'm like, just like the disposability of it in general. Okay. So like, in general, like fast fashion is meant to be, like I said before, like worn for the season, not for like years on to come. So like, so getting your use out of it, kind of thing. Yeah, it's like, something that you know you won't probably, you know, get your money's worth out of. You know, you're gonna kind of weigh weigh it out on a scale and be like, all right, I may like that, but it's not worth it for me. Yeah, like it seems to me that a lot of fast fashion are like. It's like reliant on you having a lot of different fast fashion items. Like you can't just have um, a select um, or like a very limited number of clothing items and then just play around with that and like mismatch outfits. Definitely. Because of it's like so like, well, first off, it's just like cheaper quality. So like a lot of these materials will, and then it's just like a lot of the designs on them, it seems like they're, you can only wear them in very specific type of outfits, if that makes sense as well. Like some clothing is just like, okay, I could only wear that with this type of pants and these type of shoes and my hair in a very specific, you know what I'm saying? Like Definitely. And I know you've touched on the, the season aspect for sure, but it's very interesting that you, you make that comment because I know some of these kind of leading trendier um, brands that would fall in the category of fast fashion have actually capitalize on that aspect of, you know, pushing out promotional strategies where you can mix and match, you know, and, and kind of use these outfits or these, these pants and, and these shirts or, you know, hoodies that you can kind of use all year round and then you can, you know, you can add a heavier coat over, you know, if it's nicer out, take it, take it off um, and vice versa. So, so that's very interesting. Um, moving further down the list, um, I know you touched heavily on like the, the ethical practices of something that frustrates you in this category. Um, so I won't get into that. Um, um, but when necessarily do you, you like, do you, are you moved to, you know, make a purchase um, of fast fashion or any clothing? Um, yeah, is there a specific occasion? Um, is it just the timing of thing? You just feel like you need to, you know, up your wardrobe or things like that? Yeah, usually, well, I mean, it's usually, at, especially with fast fashion, and like I said, how it's so seasonal, that I often go clothes shopping 
at the beginning of the season as like I'm trying to update my wardrobe for the season. And then for things like if I have a job interview, I would I usually like to get like a okay. nice pair of like dress shirts yeah. and pants and all that. So on for specific occasions, um, you will be more inclined to, to make a purchase. And, mm -hmm. and just more in general in the beginning of seasons because it's like, though that's the time I, I usually take like a, like to take the time and like update my wardrobe if that makes sense. Definitely. Like a ca my casual wardrobe. For sure. Especially while on campus because the majority of the clothes I wear are very casual but I still would like to present myself in a certain way. And then I just want to keep my wardrobe as fresh and Definitely. Definitely. Yeah, I think another important thing that you touched on too is is almost it seems like, you know, your status um, at the time can kind of, you know, change whether you're more inclined or, or not inclined to, to make a purchase, um, you know, a clothing purchase, fast fashion purchase. Mm -hmm. um, because we are students, um, I know myself um, as well, I, I always try to, you know, stock up on clothes or get a new sweater, a new coat um, before the semester begins and then I hold on to it for the winter time and then, you know, before before we get into summer near that end of spring, um, oh. I will also get a new um, I will also get a new outfit. Sorry about that. Um, the lights are on a timer and they just cut off, but moving on. Um, thank you for your input. Um, I feel like I definitely got some pretty valuable information that my group can use. Um, how likely um, would you be to recommend um, fast fashion to a family member, or friend, or you know, on a on a scale of one to seven? Again, seven being very likely for you to recommend fast fashion to a friend, um, and one being very unlikely. And then if you can just give a, a explanation why you chose. Um. I guess it, well, I guess it would really depend on the friend, I guess, cause, or a family member, because like, for example, I'd never recommend an item of fast fashion for my brother because he would, it doesn't fit his needs, if that makes sense. So, as, cause he works um, in a very industrial type job and needs a very, um, sturdy type clothing that won't break up on the internet. It has to be durable. Right? Yeah, yeah, it has to be very sure. durable. And this, and so he looks for clothes that are stylish that he can wear off of work, but at the same time still durable that he can wear during work. So, so for someone that you um, would convince um, to, you know, to get interested into fast fashion, what would you say to them? How would you kind of convince them? Um, I guess I would, I would try to convince them in, in that sense that then I could probably get their wardrobe more fresh, you know? <laughs> I'd be sure. like, uh, you could definitely get like a fresh wardrobe out there. Def would you, would you consider, you know, recommending them just for the same reasons that fast fashion is of interest to you? Um, yeah. Because right. it's, you know, it's, it's very, it's very affordable for someone who may not um, you know, have the ability to work full time and, and doesn't have that much time on their hands. Um, and it's kind of uh, trendy in a sense and you can kind of mix and match and, you mm -hmm. know, hold on to it if you take care of it. Yeah, I would say that, um, I would try to recommend them for stuff like that, like that, if you're trying to look, um, especially like when in your more like casual everyday wear, if you're trying to up your wardrobe that fast fashion is the most affordable way to do it. Fast shopping or fast fashion and thrifting are the, are the only affordable ways to keep um, your wardrobe like fresh. I mean, other than that, you can't really, realistically, you don't have, or at least I don't have the resources to like be going out there and and just because it's winter, just buying yourself like a new like sweater or jacket or something, you know? Yes. Great, thank you. Um, so I know I know you actually touched on 
um, why you wouldn't recommend um, fast fashion to your brother um, in the case because of the, the industry that he works in and, and for the clothing not being very durable. Um, and also, it sounds like he's, um, you know, working in an industry where the fashion necessarily doesn't matter. No, you know? no. Great. So, um, this leads to our final question. Um, what words would you use to describe um, the ideal fast fashion brand? And then what specific features do you consider it um, to be the most important to that, contributing to that um, ideal brand? So, what are the brands of fast fashion again? Yeah, so some of the, the more um, trendy and prominent ones, um, especially for millennials now, are Fashion Nova, um, Forever 21. Unfortunately, I believe they're going out of business. Um, but would would H&M, Supreme be count, count as one? Because like, I always thought of that as like, definitely fast fashion is. I would actually say, um, I do consider, I would consider Supreme um, in that category in the sense that it is very trendy um, and very um, kind of makes it match matchable. Um, mm-hmm. However, I think it is uh, much more high end than a lot of these brands that, that I've listed, such as um, Gap, American Eagle, Zara. So yeah, it's like mind me, but like more middle of the road type brands. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I think another thing too, um, though that's actually a, a, a good um, brand that you bring up um, because they do kind of market to our demographic. I'd say, mm-hmm. um, but I think that's another key indicator of, of these brands that are that are prominent because of who they market to and their advertising and, and the campaigns that they push out and their their public relations um, practices. Um, but again, I know you touched a lot on like the ethical concerns and, and what goes on behind the scenes that would kind of um, make you more inclined um, to kind of connect with the brand. Um, so if you could just elaborate on that um, before we conclude um, the interview, um, again, what would you use to describe your ideal fast fashion brand? Well, ideally, the, my ideal fast fashion brand, and I don't know how this would be achieved, but I would, that you would have the affordability of these very, not necessarily high quality clothes, but at least made to look or appear more high quality than they actually are um, without jeopardizing the ethical um, consent. Because um, that's the one thing that I really don't have any brand loyalty to fast fashion is because I don't feel like they, as companies they really deserve any loyalty because they're very unethical For sure. in their business practices. So it's like... so. For you, you'd have to kind of see that proof or know of um, yeah. brands that are that kind of have that that more of that corporate social responsibility, while also um, being fashionable and, and having it, you know, fit more of a millennial style. And, yeah, and still remaining the affordability somehow. Awesome. Which may be hard as yes. <laughs> for sure. Um, well, again, um, thank you, Mr. Gomez, um, for your inputs. Um, and sharing all your feedback. Um, it's a great help for me and my group. I, I definitely think I can use a lot of this information um, as we get further along through our project and coming up with promotional strategies. Um, thank you all for watching. That um, concludes this interview. Um, I hope you guys have a great day. Thank you, Sam. All right. Bro, how long is that interview? <laughs>